Alrighty then, uh, welcome fans, uh, welcome one and all, um, uh, let's real quick, uh, think of an intro. Hello, my name is Paul the Abominable Llama, welcome to my desktop where all the magic happens, and today we're going to be playing Crypt of the Necrodancer. Um, it's a dungeon crawler game, uh, mashed up with something similar to DDR, and, uh, what you end up doing in the game is, uh, obviously crawling through a few dungeons, and, um, eventually you want to get through zone 1, 2, 3, and 4, and, uh, there's random bosses at the end of each stage, and, uh, each zone determines their difficulty. Um, aside from that, however, there's a bunch of different things on the side that you can do, uh, such as the codex, uh, which, uh, just, like it says here, it helps you master advanced, quote-unquote, advanced techniques. Um, and that's always really helpful when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, mainly because, um, it's just good to know how to use the things that, uh, you're given. Uh, like even the traps that you're, that you, uh, find sometimes throughout the dungeons, or the zones, per se, uh, will actually be of help to you more so than they, they're, uh, uh, in your way, I guess you could say. So, um, we're just gonna jump in here. Uh, we're gonna start with, um, uh, actually, we're gonna go through the tutorial for everybody. I've actually been playing this game for absolutely forever. And, um, well, not absolutely forever since it came out not too long ago. But, what I mean by that is that I play it very often, uh, at least, like, every other day. Uh, so, like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then it switches around a little bit. But, um, where I'm going with that is that, um, there's a lot of progress to be made in the game that I've already made and I can't really show to you guys. Or at least I don't have a method for doing that. And, uh, I just wanted to make sure you guys know how that necessarily works. Um, so, as you can see, we're picking up different weapons that uh, do different things and uh, have different uh, quote-unquote special abilities. Like the one we've got right now is the broadsword, and what they can do is attack uh, diagonally and in front of you. So, like, diagonal to the front. If we're standing here, right here, and then we move to these, uh, these are the three blocks that the broadsword's attack swing is on. And, uh, right after the tutorial, it tosses you right into your first, uh, dungeon. That was a zombie. You don't get to see a lot of those. Picked up a cheese wheel. Um, the way you use these... Okay, we got boots of levitation right off the bat, which is pretty lucky. Um, I'm going to take that and that. Uh, we can wait for uh, that stuff. And take that instead. Um, you can blow these golden bricks up for gold if you're short on it, uh, but you start with a bomb if you're canvas, uh, this character here. We're gonna go looking around for trouble. We still have a regular weapon, but I think that's about to change. Uh, we got something called the blood dagger, and, uh, what that basically does is if you don't have full health already uh, you have to get a certain amount of kills or kill a certain amount of enemies and uh, that will actually replenish your um, health see uh, up in the top left corner it says five more kills so after I get five more kills It, it heals me up one. And 
and uh, that's how it goes on. Heals each level. I haven't found that ring yet. Or at least encountered it. Um, so what we grabbed earlier was the Boots of Levitation, and uh, basically those make you immune, immune to all traps. Oh, look at all that gold. And you can dig around to create shortcuts for yourself throughout the level. Um, what we're going to actually do, we're going to pick up this apple, we're going to heal ourselves up with that, and then head back. Um, it doesn't matter if you actually get to the exit before the song runs out, as long as you've beaten the boss before the time runs out. Alright, so we're actually going to take that titanium spear, we're going to take that backpack as well, and we're going to take the uh, ring of war instead of what we've got currently. And we just picked up a scroll called Riches. We're doing pretty well here. I uh, don't think we want this to change at all. And there are certain hidden things every so often. But, uh... It's, it's not like it's a big deal. Uh, it doesn't make a huge difference in your game unless it's a chest. And even then, it's not a terribly large difference. Uh, what you saw there was one of the mini-bosses, the uh, Green Dragon. Um, he just has a strong output, damage output. Uh, it's nothing else, really. Uh, what we just picked up there was a uh, Blast Helm. It's uh, something you can unlock from one of the, ca the NPCs known as Hephaestus and uh, just makes life easier for the most part. And uh, we're just going to stick with what we've got going on right now. And we're going to head back. Um, another thing to consider when digging through the levels is uh, if it's actually going to be more efficient to do it that way. Um, another thing levitation boots prevent is you falling in trap doors. Uh, and that's always helpful. Um, also there's uh, cracked things like this. And uh, when you break those open, you uh, basically get a chance to, like, um, I'm not sure what the word would be for it, but um, <laughs> it teleports you to an area where there's a special type of merchant. Um, it's one of a, a number of types, and uh, it's pretty cool because it allows you to change your game up a lot, because um, you could be having an absolutely terrible run, and that could very well change it. Uh, but it's a lot of it's up to RNG when it comes to that kind of stuff. Huh. All right. Uh, what we picked up earlier was uh, something called the bomb spell, and basically, instead of needing actual bombs, um, you just need uh, the spell. And after killing so many mobs, uh, you can. Uh, use it again. And that's basically what it boils down to. Uh, so my goal with this series, uh, with the first few episodes at least, is to teach you guys about the game and uh, let you know about all the different mechanics that we've got going on in here. Um, 
and that's my goal with like at least the first 10 episodes and just explain things because um, we're kind of diving right in because I'm unable to like uh, uh, show you guys the progress that I had made before. Uh, so we're going to head down and now we're at the boss. And uh, the unique thing about this boss is the fact that he can change up the tempo to some extent. And, uh, sorry, I had to concentrate a little bit there. And, uh, right there we defeated him. Um, I had an extra damage boost, but, uh, typically your first time around, you're only going to have about one damage on him each time you hit him. And you have to hit him about, I believe, uh, eight times or so. And it's always just easier to get rid of his zombie minions than to, uh, go through the pain of everything else. Um, I'm not going to spoil any of the story for you, line, for you guys. Uh, it's not terribly involving, but uh, it is an interesting story nonetheless. Um, obviously, the namesake of the game is in Zone 4, or the last zone as far as I know where I see him. But uh, that was one run. Uh, I'm not sure what time we're at. But uh, I want to go over one of these codexes. Um, there's a lot of different ones, and uh, it's just teaching you like how to avoid damage, how to use traps, and other things to your advantage, as well as like bombs and other tools um, that you find in the game that aren't typically very useful uh, very often, but can be useful in certain situations. And uh, I just wanted to show you a little bit about that. This one's called Dragon Lore and uh, basically shows you how to avoid damage for a lot of these things once you figure it out but it's just trial and error the first time you go through it mostly and there's a, a big trick to this um, if you guys didn't notice it takes about four or five steps for the dragon to actually move and um, so that was one step Or before he can actually do his attack and there's like a certain rhythm you got to get into so that way you can attack him because he can't attack diagonally he's only got this horizontal attack as well as uh, just like a claw up and down but his horizontal attack is the most effective or the most devastating it typically does you in if you've taken any damage at all or it brings you down to one heart. Um, we're only at about 13 minutes in this episode, so um, we're gonna we're gonna try all zones mode. We do have a few uh, diamonds to spend, and you unlock this guy eventually. Um, where you find him, though, I believe is in zone three, and he's unlockable in there. And uh, the way the way you unlock the characters is. While you're playing the level, these characters, or these NPCs, will spawn in cages. And uh, what you want to do with those is um, find the key in the level. And uh, more often than not, the merchant, the, uh, the guy who sells you stuff during the actual levels, actually um, has, uh, he actually would end up having your, um, the key to unlock the NPC and you have to buy it for like a few hundred coins so it is relatively difficult to do uh, but we're gonna give all zones mode a try and we're gonna just go as long as possible uh, we're not gonna try to necessarily speed run it um, one other thing is you cannot bring any like uh, you guys saw that I purchased that ring of war earlier um, however, it does not really apply here. 
because this is all zones mode. This is where records are set and stuff like that. And uh, they, they don't want uh, people walking in overpowered and immediately beat the game right before it should even happen. As well as it resets your health. Everybody's got the same health. And uh, it's just a lot tougher all around because you can't use your upgrades. And uh, that, that makes the game relatively difficult. But it's not terrible. Um, so what I'm going to keep doing with the Minotaur is uh, just having him walk around me. Like that. Uh, he did open a, a little area for us, but we're not going to capitalize on that at all. Ah, oh, snap. I'm almost dead. There we go. There we go. Getting somewhere. There we go. Solid. Alright, so we're going to dig our way back to the shop where hopefully we're going to buy the, uh, what's it called? The long sword because that's my one of my favorite weapons, mainly because um, it does damage in both blocks that are ahead of you, right in front of you. So it, its range is too like the spear, however, it's a lot... Uh, more damage and it does damage to more than one enemy at a time oh I'm the bard I didn't realize that people only move according to me I did not think that it was gonna be I didn't I didn't anticipate it being like this um, I didn't even think about this when I got in to this level but uh, basically the special ability of this guy called the bard is uh, that everything moves to his pace so nothing moves out of turn like so and um, that makes it a lot easier and if you're one of the kinds of people who likes to take their sweet time with things um, Oh snap, who's coming after us? Ah, snap. Alright. Well, uh, that's it there. Uh, that, that dragon, I, I didn't think about it for some reason or another. But, uh, I just let the dragon kill me, I guess. Um, terrible mistake by me. But, uh, better, better soon than never. Because, uh, going through all four zones would take absolutely forever. That's like a... I would argue that could be like a hour long episode. Um, so we're gonna return to the lobby and uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna leave you with this. Uh, I'm gonna leave you with a few things actually. Um, one thing I wanted to say is that I am a student in college. Um, I'm studying computer science uh, and uh, w what I wanna do with that is to one day own my own video game development company and make games for people because uh, I feel like it's the next medium in terms of how stories are told. Uh, there was books, there's movies, and uh, they're increasingly getting more interactive as we continue into the future, I guess. And um, I just find it absolutely mind-blowing how awesome that is. And uh, that's what I want to do with games. But um, the other thing I wanted to say is that Seeing as I am a student in college, I want to let you guys know ahead of time, if you guys are looking forward to episodes, I hate to disappoint, but at the same time i got to warn you guys that I will be busy a lot of the time and unable to uh, necessarily comply with certain things. And uh, so, so my goals for the channel is, uh, one, that it's a creative and open space for anybody. Um, 
That being said, I don't want people spamming their, their own stuff, saying, hey, come check out my stuff. Uh, those kinds of things will be removed. However, I do want to like showcase fan art for games and stuff and give credit where credit's due because that's what makes the game community so awesome and that's what it makes it awesome to be a part of these games uh, like the Dark Souls community uh, there's so many uh, great artists out there that create fan art for those kinds of games and uh, they don't necessarily get a lot of um, uh, credit for, for what they do so if I, if I have something in my video or if I have a thumbnail of uh, some sort of fan art of a game, uh, depending on whatever game. Um, I'm going to make sure to give credit where credit's due, uh, and that's one of my my big things. Um, that being said, as well, uh, my my photo on my channel right now is actually Carl from Llamas with Hats, and uh, credit for that image obviously goes to the wonderful people called Film Cow, and uh, they do a lot of different animated shorts. They're relatively dark and twisted but I find it hilarious all the same um, the other thing I wanted to mention before I sign out here is that I plan to play a lot more than just this game um, for some reason uh, for some reason or another Crypto the Necronant Dancer has uh, timed out I, I honestly don't know what happened there I was just dancing around and it closed, but um, what I did want to say is that before I sign out, I do plan to play a whole, uh, whole bunch of different games besides this one. Um, I plan to do different dungeon crawlers as well, not only this one. Uh, my goal for the channel is to just be a variety channel, uh, not necessarily um, just like known for one specific niche or game. Because uh, that's that's limiting myself and you guys to what kind of content you want to see. And I don't feel like that's fair to you or to me. Um, so that's, that's how I feel about that. Um, that being said, uh, I keep saying that, but uh, I, I, I want to get to all my points here. Um, I, I'm going to be playing Dark Souls. Um... Dark Souls 2, uh, or Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, uh, depending on what I'm feeling. Um, I am familiar with Dark Souls 2, but not Scholar of the First Sin. So, uh, if you guys want a more experienced and professional playthrough of the game, I'll probably do the first one, rather than Scholar of the First Sin. Um, that's just one of the types of games that's like a RPG, uh, 3D RPG um, it's not really massive multiplayer online kind of thing, um, as well as like Star Wars The Force Unleashed, Saints Row 4, those kinds of games are like RPGs to me, um, Deus Ex, uh, Machina and stuff like that, um, I do also plan to, to play some puzzle games, uh, such as Portal, Portal 2, um, and we'll go from there, and then, uh, a lot of more story-based games where your choices affect the, the the story itself and those would be games like The Walking Dead uh, uh, Season 1 and 2 because I do have both and I plan to get to both um, as well as uh, Life is Strange and uh, other games like that um, and I also plan to do like a not necessarily daily series but different different games that we can always play and have a consistent series because you can't really play Portal forever. There's not necessarily like different content every day for that kind of stuff or different challenges that present itself each time you play. It's typically, typically the same stuff all the time, but that's only typically. So I could be wrong if you guys want me to play like Portal 2 all the time. Um, I'm sure we could make something work. But, um, like, uh, I'm thinking about playing Geometry Dash a little bit, but that's not necessarily the most entertaining kind of game, uh, where it takes a whole bunch of, um, it, it's not very engaging to watch, is how I feel about that game. But, um, games like this we can play, uh, as part of our daily series, 
um, as well as Rocket League, Binding of Isaac, uh, Afterbirth, and uh, probably like one or two other games um, that, that I have, but I'm lacking the names right now. Um, I'm saying um a lot, and I want to apologize for that, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I want this to be a variety channel as well as an open space. Um, not necessarily a place for everybody to complain about uh, life and all that, but I want to have uh, more intelligent dis discussions um, just just about the games in general uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I w a good community is what I hope for, <laughs> and uh, I really hope that if you're here, you feel the same way. Um, I want to say before I sign off, that I absolutely enjoyed making this video for you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, as well as, uh, well, nothing other than that. Uh, my main goal is for you guys to enjoy the content I produce, as well as I enjoy it with you. Um, and I hope to create a community that that uh, can be like that. Um, and uh, that's that's what I want to aspire to more so than anything else. So the games we play don't necessarily play a huge part in it. Um, I just want to maintain variety, and that's that's uh, how I plan to to create the community. Um, all right, I think I've said enough. I think I've bored you enough with uh, my ramblings, and I wanted to say thank you so much for watching. My name is Paul the Abominable Llama. And um, remember, somebody loves you, just not this llama. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.